Good morning and welcome to the Operational Services Committee for June 20th, 2023. On this committee is Councillor Thiessen, Councillor O'Toole, and Mayor Clayton, along with myself, uh, Councillor Bosch. So we will start and call this to order. We don't have any delegations today, so we'll go right into our service area report with Chief Glavin. Thank you, Chair Bosch. Lots going on at the moment, so we'll have a fairly large uh, brief here. Uh, first is the CHP project with the sand attenuation at East Link. It's about 70% complete. However, it's looking to rapidly wrap up here with uh, most of the installation being done by the end of this week. And uh, the next component of that work will be the sound study that will take place uh, at some point in July. Uh, moving on to energy and environment, this week is pollinator week and we have a number of activities including a virtual scavenger hunt that is uh, about our orchards and how to keep pollinators thriving. There are five prize packs that can be won and participants can register at goosechase.com. Uh, as well, tomorrow we have a GP uh, Grows event uh, at uh, from 6 to 7 p.m. at 89 B Street and 113 Avenue. And the topic for that event is uh, in the orchard, but uh, pests in invasive species and how you can grow what's there. As well, we have been active with schools and teaching verma composting uh, and have had six events over the last three weeks. In engineering services, uh, we've recently posted the RFP for the 2024 road overlay program, design and construction supervision, uh, and have recently closed uh, requests for quotes for asphalt crack sealing at various sites throughout the city, uh, RFP for bridge repair and maintenance, uh, as well as a tender for road rehabilitation overlay program for phase four and patching. With construction activity picking up, there are a number of projects that are or will be impacting traffic and pedestrians. Uh, currently, uh, we have the 116th Avenue project. This is from the bridge uh, over by the hospital to 102nd Street that is going to take most of the summer for that to complete, largely due to very substantial storm upgrades and replacements uh, in that area. Uh, as well, uh, this morning we uh, got started with an intersection traffic signal repair. Uh, part of that was due to some damage that occurred during the downtown project that's just being uh, completed now. Uh, and should be done by the end of June, uh, as well as uh, we'll have the westbound lanes of 84th Avenue west of 108th Street. Uh, that reconstruction for those two lanes uh, is expected to be about two months. We have a intersection improvement and traffic signal installation at 132nd Avenue and 97B Street, uh, just kind of west of uh, Crystal Lake. Uh, 92nd Street uh, will be beginning a road overlay in that area from 92nd Avenue to 100th Avenue in July. Uh, 68th Avenue westbound from Kateri to 104th Street, so that's to the CKC site. Uh, that will also begin in July. Uh, and that'll be right after the triathlon completes in that area, so post July 9th. Uh, there's a number of other small, smaller projects scattered throughout uh, the city and local and collector roads. Uh, Couple not well. Uh, a non-road project is the slope repair uh, north of 68th Avenue and the bridge. Uh, the earthwork should be done here early July, and we're expecting the pathway to be reopened by the end of July. Uh, one non-city project uh, that some of you may have noticed is on 101st Street in the Swanhaven neighborhood south of Bennett's. Uh, this is a sewer upgrade uh, going from 98th Avenue to 90th Avenue. Uh, and uh, that'll take uh, a little bit more time in that area. I don't have an exact completion date from Aquaterra on that. In transit, uh, we're hosting the Youth Advisory Committee on July 4th, and we'll be providing them a tour of our facilities, as well as providing an opportunity to speak with various staff members uh, to allow them to better understand the complexity of how you deliver uh, transit in an urban environment. In parks, uh, a few things the public will notice. Uh, we have, uh, we'll be doing our playground rototilling uh, in a number of areas, as well as the installation of 18 new picnic tables and four new red kiosks within the Muskocebe corridor. Uh, with regard to operations and some beautification, flower planting has been completed and most of our mowing is completely caught up from the shutdown due to the wildfires. Uh, naturalization is also underway at three new areas as part of the Boulevard pilot project. 
Uh, information sessions were held for residents that live adjacent to the pilot areas. Some themes from the sessions were concerns around fire risk, noxious weeds, litter, and increased wildlife. Uh, some of the mitigations in place for that, uh, the fire risk is being evaluated by the fire department and will form part of the fire smart work that is being led by the fire department. And as uh, uh, Chief Lemieux said, there will be a report coming back in the not so distant future on that. Uh, noxious weeds and wildlife are being monitored and controlled by our integrated pest management team and litter is being monitored by our sanitation team. Uh, administration is planning to bring forward a report near the end of Q3 with a review of the first year of the pilot operations. Uh, Parks continues to perform fire, uh, fire smart activities as resources allow uh, in areas adjacent to the country club as well as the water treatment plant. In transportation, painting crews assisted with both the Pride Crosswalk and Residential School Survivors Crosswalk over the past two weeks. Uh, and tomorrow, uh, we have uh, transportation will be managing traffic for the Indigenous Day Parade that will take place more at 5 p.m. along 102nd Street. Uh, preparations, um, or uh, actually, uh, admin uh, also expects to have the crosswalk policy in front of committee on July 4th, subject to legal review completion. Um, the Transportation Association of Canada guidelines that we were waiting for uh, came out, as I think I previously updated. However, one of the things that came in uh, with those guidelines is a recommendation that non-standard road markings not be used within school areas. Uh, we're currently evaluating this recommendation as part of our policy, and uh, we'll address that uh, when we come back to committee here in about two weeks. And with that, I'll take any questions. Thank you, Mr. Glavin. Yes, you do have a lot there. You know what stood out to me? Your B pollinator week, and then your visitation is at 89B Street. Did you guys plan that? We did not. What about 89? <laughs> awesome. Okay, as you kept speaking, more and more names came up. So, uh, Mayor Clayton. Day, Chief Glab and I have about four items, um, but I will go one and then get back in the queue. I'm just trying to figure out which one. Um, let's talk about the sewer upgrade um, west of Bonnets first. Um, that isn't our project. Um, if I recall correctly, when Council in a few years ago approved um, funding for expansion or improvement on the Lodin Bay, at Bonnets, one of the reasons we couldn't go ahead of it was because of the capacity of the street and the infrastructure on the west side of that building. I'm curious with the sewer upgrade work, the project that's not ours, if now there will be increased capacity and the potential project of the upgrade on the doors is possible. And I'm thinking you may not know that right now, but if, um, if you could get that to us, it'd be valuable. Yes, thanks, Chair Bosch. I don't know that answer, but that's something I can certainly look into and bring back. Great, thank you. You got other people? I do. Okay, I'll wait. I got three others, but... Uh, Councillor Blackmore. I have two, but they're sort of the same. They're both street-related. Um, so oh, on, come on. Um, on uh, the um, bypass uh, reconstruction, uh, there was two lanes blocked off Sunday all day, but there was actually no construction taking place and no construction had started yet. Um, so uh, I was obviously personally responsible for this decision because I got yelled at on three by three different people. Um, I'm wondering why we would uh, allow our contractors to block off a street when they hadn't started construction and it's a weekend. Can they not... Um, align their tasks a little better. Uh, that's one question. And then the other question was, I was wondering why uh, Resources Road southbound was closed today uh, in front of the co-op. Thanks, Chair Bosch. Uh, so regarding the first question, um, yeah, I can't think of a good reason why uh, they would have had that off if they weren't doing construction. And I'll go back to our project manager on that and see what the reason was. Uh, why they blocked the lanes off and didn't have activity happening. That's not something we would encourage. Okay. Uh, regarding the uh, uh, southbound traffic 
on Resources Road this morning by the co-op. That is for the signals uh, work that's being done due to some damage that was done during the phase four of downtown construction last year uh, and some work that we're just going to do while we're there. Uh, if we're going to open the road up to do one thing, we may as well uh, make a couple other repairs that are necessary in that area, will be necessary in the near future. And that should be done within two weeks. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Burke. Thank you, Chair Bosch. So uh, my question, um, Chief Glavin, is around naturalization. Uh, I like the idea. I uh, Ultimately, to me, it is, is for trees to grow in and create a, a more beautiful landscape behind people's homes and create a buffer, a barrier between high traffic areas uh, and people's backyards. Are we planning on planting any trees to accelerate that naturalization? Thank you, Chair Bosch. Uh, I'm not aware of any specific tree plantings in the pilot areas. I think the pilot areas are largely going to be uh, monitored for noxious weeds uh, and will uh, evaluate over the next three years. If this were a permanent site, I think we would look at more investment into the area, but as it is pilot in nature, we're not looking to plant any uh, trees that would be assumed to be permanent. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor O'Connor. Thank you, Chair Bosch. I have two points. Um, is there an overall, uh, Chief Glavin, uh, map that shows all the construction projects going on in the city? Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Chair Bosch. Uh, yes, there is a map on the website called the Traffic Planner. It is a little bit busy as far as the amount of data points that are on it. Uh, in talking to comms, there will be a more um, easy to interpret map that will be coming out here on July 1st. Uh, that they'll be publishing with our construction projects. Okay, and my second point, uh, okay. uh, yet re in regards to the naturalization, um, I'm not sure where all three are, but I'm assuming on Resources Road between uh, 80, 68th and 76th, that's being naturalized. And right now that looks like it's had one cut and then a second cut on the on the on the top and it, it's looking not bad uh, so i'm just wondering there was invitation we as counselors we didn't receive any invitation to go to the meetings with the neighborhoods and i think in future we would like to be at least i would like to be included on those invitations thank you chair bosch so i'll kind of address that in reverse so i that is some feedback that we got and we'll in the future address that where we'll ensure that where appropriate council is invited. Uh, as you mentioned, council was not invited to the information sessions with adjacent residents, uh, but uh, certainly take your feedback and the feedback of some residents on that one. Uh, with regard to the locations, there are three locations for the Boulevard Pilot. Uh, one is 116th Avenue near, near Copperwood, east of 92nd Street. Uh, the second is 84th Avenue near Canfor, so kind of east of Mission Heights Drive where the fast gas is there. And on Resources Road, south of uh, 76th Avenue to city limits. Thank you, uh, Chief Glavin. Yeah, I'm just going to pop in here for a second. Okay. Uh, this communication piece that we're talking about, can, is there something on our website that shows exactly where these pilot naturalization areas are or some you know shout out saying look what we're doing at this point in time and then aside of the traffic planner i'm happy to hear that for july 1st but something that tells people that this is something new that we're trying and um, to communicate to the public thanks chair bosch uh, so with regard to the website i'd have to look to confirm i know that it was part of the agenda package when this was approved back in february although that's long enough ago that probably no one would think to look there um, but I will bring that back as an item uh, if it's not on the website to get something on there. I think that'd be great. Thank you. Uh, Mayor Clayton, you had something on naturalization? Thanks, Chair Bosch. Uh, yeah, just on echoing that, the three pilot projects, uh, Copperwood, can for resources, um, I think that it would be valuable information to, to reshare Chief Glavin in regards to the benefits of naturalization. Council approved this project based on slowing water runoff, uh, preventing erosion, uh, reducing mowing, uh, facilitating improved carbon sequestration. Like there's a list of items there of, of the reasons that were presented to council when they made that decision. Uh, I think that highlighting those would be valuable. Um, also, um, 
tell committee the process of um, what's going to happen. So these pilot projects are going ahead. When will council hear success or not success? And when will um, the public have an opportunity to be aware of that? Because they may choose to come to council to speak about it. Thanks, Chair Bosch. So the, the next check-in that we have planned for uh, committee and council is the end of Q3, so kind of the end of the growing season that we bring forward a review of the current pilot areas, how they're performing, are they meeting expectation, you know, are there any issues with them, uh, aside from some of the uh, uh, public feedback that we're getting on those. Uh, and we'll include that as well. We, do, we have captured uh, some of that feedback, so we'll, we'll be able to speak to that as well. Uh, the term of the pilot was for three years, so the spring of this year to the fall of 2025 is the time horizon we're working with. Thank you. Still um, on that. Oh, you still Thanks. Um, in regards to that, um, can you tell us how the, the sort of, it seems polar opposite to me to talk about fire smart where we're trimming bases of trees and, and clearing sight lines along properties, et cetera, for fire smart, but then the other side of it is we're naturalizing. And so what consideration and how do fire smart and naturalization work together? Thank you, Chair Bosch. Uh, this is certainly something that we're looking to um, have a more um, refined stance on here. So that's part of this uh, work that we're going to be doing with the fire department and fire smart uh, and looking at um, are there potential mitigations that can be used with this? Is this something perhaps that we could go in each fall and mow down a portion of it, not mowing it down to turf length, but uh, reduce the amount of material that could catch fire um, in the spring? As there is typically, typically in a, in a somewhat more normal season, there's only a short period of time where you have all the dead grass before the new grass grows, and it, that starts to mitigate the, the uh, the opportunity for fire, but this is something that is high on our list given the conditions that we've endured this spring and continue to will likely endure for the rest of the summer. So we're keenly aware of the issues around fire mitigation and naturalization. Um, if possible, when your report comes this fall, if you can um, include cost consideration of, of doing that annual mode to prevent thatching and thicker growth on that naturalization. Personally, I've n not been a supporter of naturalization from the very beginning, um, but I think that uh, um, there needs to be a, a very serious conversation on how naturalization works with fire smarting. Thanks. Thank you. Um, Councillor Thiessen. Awesome. Thank you very much. I have lots to talk about, actually. Uh, some was brought up by some of our non-committee members. Um, one of the things I wanted to talk to you about was also the bypass work. I think. Perhaps not only was it done a bit too early, but driving the bypass myself it seemed like a lot of the pylons were knocked down and I wasn't sure if that was due to reckless driving or just a confusion over the staging. I saw a lot of cars traveling, swerving in and out of the lane, trying to figure out which lane they had to drive in. And I think that caused some of the pylons to go down. So how they stage and when they stage is important, uh, especially uh, like Councillor Blackmore said, if they're doing it on the weekend, it inconveniences some of our people. Just a question on, actually, I'll go to naturalization because I had that too. Um, so I let my yard go natural for the no mow May. And uh, I yesterday I got the, the privilege of weeding my, my backyard. And I came out with a full bag, a full garbage bag of thistle, stinkweed, and uh, other noxious stuff. So I guess my concern with naturalization is, as much as I'm for it, is that I think we need to approach it with a bit of intention. Uh, and, and I say that because it's one thing to just leave it, uh, but if those noxious weeds are going to propagate, we could be creating more work for our staff going forward and just managing those spaces. Uh, there are, I know Case and his team are, are pretty brilliant at how to, how to work with the land. Um, <clears throat> but if we had a bit more intention on maybe spreading clover or other stuff that is natural to the area, that would choke out some of those noxious weeds as well and hopefully prevent uh, future... Uh, labor of our parks department and to maintaining those. Um, so for me, I'm I'm a big I'm a big fan of naturalization, but I do think that we to do nothing is potentially going to create more work for us later, and that perhaps we should add some intention into some of that naturalization if we're going to stick with it. Um, 
A question that I have that uh, hasn't been asked yet is also in regards to crosswalks. So as we develop this strategy for crosswalks that we're going to bring forward to the community, have we gauged it against, um, uh, I guess, the solar light up, like this is a crosswalk sort of thing that we've done in different areas and associated a cost differential for that? Because there's a cost to painting our crosswalks. Uh, largely, it's it's taken on by, by by other groups, but sometimes we get asked to to take on the cost or some of the cost. Um, it might be just as effective to have those flashing cross crosswalks. You know, the ones that I think they cost twenty grand or something like that to set up over the city. Have we done a cost comparison to, you know, uh, maybe five years of crosswalk painting versus the light up solar crosswalks? Thank you, Chair Bosch. Uh, with respect to the crosswalk uh, policy, it's largely just to address these kind of non-standard specialty crosswalks uh, that aren't being proposed for um, their improved safety of the area. It's more so to be representative of a particular cause or issue. Um, so we haven't been looking at it through the lens of, of cost um, savings or alternatives to traditional crosswalks. Uh, and uh, to my knowledge, the uh, paint has been paid for by the organization, so we're not absorbing those costs. However, I believe we have been gifted time for our time in order to uh, do uh, traffic control. So short answer is no, we haven't been looking at uh, solar powered lights as an alternative. I think there would be a legal uh, output on that too. So if there needs to be painted streets or painted crosswalks, versus lights. I, I'm not sure. I think we'd have to check that legal side as well. Well, and I think too, also Chair Bosch, um, uh, when people are advocating for the crosswalks, part of it is to advocate for a certain cause or to brighten up the neighborhood. But some of the, the reasoning is to make the crosswalk visible so that people slow down over top of it. So there's a safety element to that uh, that I think is also served by other ways that we we do crosswalks, so just a, just a thought if, as we're going forward. If like uh, a group is like, well, we want to improve safety here, so we figure painting on the uh, the crosswalk might be an advantage to us. Um, we could come back and say, well, over five years, this option might be cheaper to improve safety over that option. So, uh, just something to be mindful of. Thank you, Councillor Thiessen. Councillor O'Toole. Yeah, uh, Chief. Uh, the question I have for you, Mr. Glavin, is the 108th Street bypass, when they're doing the paving, are they going to remove the uh, center barrier boulevard and redo that? Or are they going to put, and are they going to put more concrete around the lights uh, for driving on at 102nd? Thank you, uh, Chair Bosch. Uh, I believe they are doing improvements to the median uh, between the, uh, the eastbound and uh, westbound lanes uh, as part of that project, but I can confirm. Uh, and there will be some geometric improvements that will be happening at the 102nd Street. Uh, I don't have them in front of me at this point, but I believe they'll be addressing any of the current concerns at that intersection. Yeah. When we had that major heat, the concrete stretched and buckled. And uh, I just wanted to know if that was being repaired. Thanks, Chair Bosch. Um, now that you've better articulated the question there, I'll have to confirm on um, what that looks like from for concrete at that intersection. I'm not sure at the top, off the top of my head. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Quayton. Thanks, uh, Chair Bosch. Um, you mentioned a project at 84th as well as a project on 68th. I'm wondering, um, um, as Council has identified earlier, that there is um, safety concerns with heavy truck traffic going through our community um, on a regular basis. Um, and obviously, the multiple construction projects on um, 116th and 108th um, now would delay heavy truck traffic. Um, is there any consideration for rerouting trucks to go down 116th Street and potentially um, directly south to the correction line. Um, you had mentioned that there's a project on 68th and it appears through the multiple construction projects, it would be um, good due diligence to move trucks out of the city right now, never mind the safety that it prevents. But I'm wondering if those conversations have happened. 
Thank you, Chair Bosch. Um, any new truck routes would be welcome uh, to move truck traffic out of our larger um, or our more congested roadways. Um, right now, unfortunately, the uh, Range Road 63 in the county to the correction line is a non-truck route specifically uh, in that the county does not allow trucks on that road. Uh, aside from it is also the over-dimensional truck route, so it's a little bit of a um, odd one in this one. It's the only over-dimensional route in order to get trucks across uh, the river to Highway 40. So uh, right now we would certainly welcome that as an opportunity. Um, to my knowledge right now, there isn't support for doing that. So I wonder if council, if somebody from council would be willing to make a motion to direct the mayor to write to, uh, the Reeve of the County um, um, a letter to request um, access to um, that route due to the delays and increased volume during construction season. So. Okay, thank you. We'll just finish with the questions and then we'll go into the motions. Councillor Thiessen? Well, no, sorry, let's stick to the topic and then change the topic. Yeah. Yeah, I can, I can make that motion. I think it's appropriate. Offered to do it already. And I just wanted to speak on that too, is when the county was doing a bunch of work in Claremont, they asked if we could designate a different route for a truck route to go through town. Uh, it was a pain in the ass for us. Pain in the derriere for us. <laughs> but we made it work, and that was an obligation that we did because it saved them a lot of time and money. So we've already in it. They owe us now. Okay, can you make the motion then, and I'll did. call it. Thank you. That is the motion. Did you get The specific route would be? Uh, to the correction line. So to direct traffic uh, south to the correction line. On 116. On 116 uh, Street. And we'll take a look at that, and then we'll call the question. Do you have it? Oh, there we go. Okay, thank you. I'll call the question. And that has passed. We'll go on to the next question. Councillor Thiessen. Thank you very much, Chair Bosch. Wow, this is awesome. We're getting business done, and it's a, it's a pretty light agenda, but a busy, busy uh, department. Um, uh, Chief Glavin, uh, in regards to the 84th Avenue westbound lane construction, um, I know for a few years, uh, Aquaterra was doing work on the, on the eastbound lane of 84th, and construction was staged across those westbound lanes. How much, like, uh, that road was done relatively recently within the last 10 years um just a uh, is this a just an overlay project or are we doing part road reclamation and i guess the final part of the question is uh, how much wear and tear uh do we imagine we experience because of that long construction season with aquaterra thank you chair bosch uh, there's a new a number of challenges with um 84th avenue you know the aquaterra project um you know, had a couple issues with it, with uh, some unexpected material they encountered during construction that lengthened it, and then there was a sagging pipe that needed to be uh, fixed. Um, but truck traffic is the, the largest um, contributor to deteriorating road conditions on 84th Avenue. Uh, I believe the eastbound lanes uh, were redone at some point in the last 10 years. The westbound lanes, I'd have to look, those are the original lanes prior to twinning. Uh, I don't recall when they were last uh, done, but this is a full reconstruction for uh, the westbound lanes uh, only. Okay, thanks. Thanks for clarifying that because uh, my next question was going to be, uh, well, how long is the overlay going to last so that we're doing the road reclamation? Uh, thanks. Thanks for reiterating. Thank you. So the bypass is just an overlay at this point in time, right? In all in all parts of it, or is it total reclamation? 
No, uh, so um, I'll just separate the two projects that we've been kind of chatting about here, the larger ones. So we have a 84th Ave westbound mm -hmm. that uh, Councillor Thiessen brought up, uh, that's a full reconstruction. And then you have the uh, bypass uh, is also a full reconstruction. Oh, that one's full, okay. It looks like uh, the north side at the moment, so I thought maybe it was just overlay. Uh, Mayor Clayton, did you have any more? I had one more, thank you. Um, you, you mentioned uh, work that was being done in the parks, and I was curious, um, do you happen to know off the top of your head of how many um, outdoor water filling stations we currently have within the city? Thank you, Chair Bosch. Off the top of my head, I don't. Okay. Um, if appropriate, I'd like to make a motion. Could you bring back a report indicating how many outdoor uh, water filling stations there are within the parks um, cor and trail corridors of the city. Um, and, and the reason this comes to mind for me, I was reading an article recently that the city of Edmonton in 2021 had five, and in 2022 they've up, uh, increased that amount to 20 filling stations. Um, obviously, um, there's various reasons for these filling stations and, and you know who they serve, but I think uh, I'm curious if this is something um, that council might be interested in, and if so, the numbers and, and the opportunities would be good discussion prior to fall budget. Thanks. You good? Thank you, Chair Bosch. Uh, yeah, that's certainly something we can bring back, and uh, we'll try and find um, some of the data out of Edmonton regarding costs Excellent. as well. Thank you. Okay, thank you. I'll call the question. And that is passed, thank you. Councilor Blackmore. This is just a really quick question and maybe it's for council as much as for administration. Have we given any consideration to renaming or in fact naming the bylaws, so that the bypass, so that we know what to call it because it's really not a bypass? The answer is no and good point. Okay. <laughs> Do you want to make a motion to get into something like that, come up with names, or do you want to just... Okay. Yeah, we should explore that. Well, no, but it's 116th and 108th, and yeah. 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 Okay. Um, the one, the one question I have is for last year's phase four construction, the planters. They are in dire need of um, attention, and that is under the the warranty side mm -hmm. of the contractor. Can we get that done? Um, I'm asking because we have the Canada Day Parade going through there. We also have street performers, the farmers market people traveling through in Ribfest. So I would like that to be um, presentable for our visitors. Thank you, Chair Bosch. I'll take that back to uh, the team. There's somebody else. Okay. Uh, was there? Oh, Councillor Thiessen. I'm sorry, uh, Chair Bosch. You triggered another question. So traveling, I, I spent a lot of time in the core, uh, and I do notice that uh, some of the bulb outs uh, and the concrete structures have been rubbed by vehicles at different times. How frequently do we do we undertake repairs on that, or is, is this a budget item ask that we would be looking into in the future? Thank you, Chair Bosch. So there, <clears throat> there have been a couple instances where we've had um, transport trucks try to make turns downtown where they shouldn't uh, be uh, on non-truck routes uh, and have not given themselves sufficient space to get the trailer around without hitting uh, infrastructure. I believe as we've had these things come up that we've been trying to move them further back or try to improve the geometry in there even though they're still not legal maneuvers downtown. Thank you. Um, spike belts, nice. Uh, just a question um, I'll ask now about naturalization and for those, well really for people who drive by it all the time and just particularly the neighbors near to each of these, will there be like a survey to them or an open house or anything like that where they can give uh, their opinions on, on living near naturalization and how, how they appreciate it or don't appreciate it? Thank you, Chair Bosch. There aren't additional consultations coming up, but we did have three uh, open houses, four, well, I shouldn't say open house, we had three 
uh, sessions where we invited the residents that were adjacent to the pilot areas to come out and give their feedback. Uh, and uh, we'll include that as part of our update uh, on the progress with naturalization in September, uh, but there is nothing else planned at this point. For me, um, I would like to see something because, you know, the concept of it is one thing, but living with it in a, in a practical aspect is very different. And so whether it's year one or year three, I do, I do think we need to involve them in in the practical side of it. Thank you. Is there any other questions? Boy, Mr. Glavin, you are a busy person here. So um, that's a problem when you update on many things, it creates many conversations. <laughs> tis, <laughs> tis the season for you. All right, so we do not have any other business to attend to. We'll go into the outstanding items list at this moment. Thank you, Chair Bosch. And yeah, with the updates, I'd rather try and limit the amount of surprises that Council has. So I'd rather deal with them here than uh, have you guys surprised about things later. Um, with uh, the outstanding items list, uh, we should have a report here the second meeting of July for the outdoor rink, uh, the additional work that was requested by committee. Uh, the Road for the Avondale Recreation Site to 116th Avenue. We're also looking at uh, probably late Q3, but prior to budget, should council want to consider that for construction. Uh, St. Joseph's High School crosswalk painting, that should be here at the next committee on July 4th, subject to legal review. Uh, design and construction standards uh, on track for Q3. Uh, the At -like Street Atco streetlight proposal will be on council uh, for next council meeting, so that can be taken off this committee's uh, work. Okay, thank you, Chief Glavin. I need somebody to, Councillor Thiessen, he's next. Thank you very much, Chair Bosch. I'd move that we approve the outstanding items list as amended and presented. What well, was presented on, but we need to amend it, yes. Thank you, call the question. Mayor Clayton in favor. It's not coming up. Thank you, and that has uh, moved on or passed. Sorry, <laughs> I'm moving on. We're <laughs> going to adjourn, adjourn this meeting. Thank you. <laughs>